crafty friends it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a slider card featuring Neat and Tangle. This is for their Little Tangles birthday challenge. The birthday challenge is brand new for the month of August because Neat and Tangled is celebrating their fifth birthday this month and so that you know the challenge is very fitting and I had started coloring up some of these images from Big Top Birthday and I thought, well, why not put some of those images to work to make a card for the challenge? I colored up a ton of images. I stamped about six card size sheets of images from the stamp set and then colored them all over the course of a day. I kind of like to do this because then when I go to card make, I have a whole bunch of images to work from. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I did want to share some things about the Copic color. So here for the banner, I want to emphasize the fact that the banner has, um, you know, like the back of the banner is behind it and the banner has a little bit of like 3D-ness to it. And so I'm just using some C markers. I'm using C1 and C00. And I'm coloring the banner and I'm not worried about the lines on the top or the bottom of the banner because I'm going to color those in with a darker color. And one of the reasons that I wanted to show you just a bit of my Copic coloring today was to share those ways that I save a little bit of time because I do like to color so many images at once. So one way is by coloring darker colors over lighter colors so that you don't have to fuss with coloring in the lines. You can color faster if you're not coloring in the lines. And here that's really easy to do, but actually even if you were coloring the edges with a light one, because I did color some of them yellow actually, um, the fact that you have the gray underneath will add some shadowing. The, I have the cool grays and the warm grays and both of them, if you are coloring something and then you color over top of where you colored the grays, but you put the shadows in the right spot, it may make some shadows through your color, but to me it doesn't detract. In fact, it adds a little bit of shading without you having to go over with the um, other color. So here I colored it with teal and I only used one color of teal because I wanted to again keep it quick, but that underneath shading actually lended a little bit and there is a little bit of a 3D effect or a little bit of a shading effect even in the teal. As mentioned, I think that starting with a light color and then coloring darker colors over top is a great way to save time. And I do that in a number of images, but here I'm going to show you coloring this little stand that the strong man from the set can stand on top of or some of the other elements from the set, really anyone can, but um, I chose to put this, the strong man on top of it. And I'm using yellows. I'm using Y13, 15, and 18. I've tried a couple different yellow combinations. This one sort of wound up my favorite. And I thought yellow, red, blue, and I actually used teal because that's just more of a personal preference. Those were like really circusy colors to me, but I did throw in a bit of pink as well, as you can see in some of the other things that were colored, just because um, like the cotton candy was going to be pink and it worked so well for so many of the little sweet treats. And here, with this, I thought, well, either the teal color or the red color will both be darker than the yellow, so it will be fine if I color most of it yellow first. I did avoid the stripes just because I knew I'd be using the lighter blue color. I'm using, um, I think it's BG49 and BG13, which are quite different but actually blended fine and made a deeper shadow faster so that I didn't have to use many colors. And I kind of vary my method. I don't keep one or the other too strong in terms of whether I start with my light or my darkest because I think that really both of those techniques work. It's just a matter of what you're comfortable with. Sometimes starting with the darkest color saves you a bit of time with coloring, so I'd give that a shot if you find that coloring takes a long time and that's kind of discouraging for you. But as you can see there, if I had to have colored around those triangles and those circles while adding shading with the yellow, that would have been kind of tricky. So by deciding to use only the dark teal on the bottom triangles and only my darkest red on the dots, I kind of avoided that, that fussiness. And since I was coloring, like I said, about three or four sheets of each of these, it's worth the time. And so that's why I wanted to share it with you. I did the same thing like with the cake. I colored some of the cakes yellow or pink because those are light colors. And then I made the icing brown because if I got a little bit of pink or yellow in the icing area, once I covered it with a dark brown to look like chocolate icing, you never knew, knew that I colored outside the lines and it saved me a bunch of time. So 
think about how you can use that in your coloring if that's important to you and you know see if you like the look of it i wanted to do some to do something fun with this card and i knew that all of these adorable little images would make a cute card no matter what but i thought i could make an interactive element and the one that stood out to me was the idea of a slider card because it kind of would play on the idea that they were putting on a little circus act with one of the critters jumping on top of the strong man. So I decided to go with the lion because he seems to make the most sense just in the positioning of his hands. And that slider die that I have is a little too big. And there are some different ways you can get around it. Um, I did find a smaller slider die that I happen to own, but you could cut your own slider or you could make the slider go behind the strongman, but um, the lion will still stop at the strongman because the foam tape will run into where the strongman die cut is and it won't slide past him. So like right there, mine's actually a mine, even though I found a smaller one, is still longer than the strongman, or sorry, is still comes below the strongman, but the strongman stops it. And so I, I'm going to pop the strong man up on some foam tape as well as the pedestal that he's standing on. And I'm going to put foam tape behind the whole card panel so that the slider works more effectively. I knew that the lion would have to have some foam tape on him because he was going to be a slider. And so I figured may as well pop up the strong man to go with it so he doesn't look like he's kind of falling in front of the strong man. Also, it allows me to put some elements behind the strong man and create more of a look of a scene with some things being in front. And so, because the sentiment's going to go in front of everything, it also needs a bit of foam tape. In this instance, I happen to have the scotch foam tape nearby, so that's what I used. And I found it easier to put my main focal image, because he's in the center, down first, and then add the different images around it. As I said, I do like to color a whole bunch of stuff at one time, and the reason that I like that is because now it makes putting this card together really easy, because if I decide I want a little extra detail, like I want an ice cream cone or something, I don't have to stop and color it, and I don't have to think about it beforehand. I can play with all these elements on my card, kind of like you would with pre-made embellishments. Now, I really like clean and simple cards, but I also think that scenes are fun. So I was trying to find a mix of the clean look with a lot of white space and the creation of a scene. So I decided to take the little star detail from the stamp set, and I was going to stamp it to help pull in some of the other colors from the scene as well, because I was using the pink in parts of the scene. So I decided to stamp the worn worn lipstick distress oxide ink distress oxide inks are honestly my new go-to for colored inks if you are only going to invest in one set of colored inks the oxides are so fun because they work really well for solid stamping because of their pigment properties but they do a lot of fun techniques because of their distress properties and so i don't know i'm really happy with them for that although i do have a lot of colored inks but i get a really good impression every time if i were using regular dye colored dye inks I don't know that I would always get a perfect impression, but because of that pigment quality, I'm still getting a really nice impression, and I am um, getting a really like bright pigmented look. So I stamped the stars in fossilized amber, and as I mentioned before, worn lipstick, and I just sort of filled the top part of the scene so that it sort of faded away, it wasn't too overwhelming. Um, and ideally, I should have done that before I glued down the strong man. But as I said, sometimes I'm kind of just playing as I go when I make a card. And here I'm able to balance out the larger clown with the smaller bear by adding little accessories to the bear. So I was able to give him some cotton candy and ice cream cone in his hand so that he's a little bit more substantial and balances out well. So that's another advantage of having those little things ready on hand. Maybe a birthday hat too would have been fun for him, especially because it's a birthday card. So. Here, I am ready to do the slider part. So I've already die cut the slider channel. As you saw before, there's foam tape behind this whole card panel here. So now I'm gonna add two pennies, one to the element that I want to slide. Then I'm going to put some foam tape between the two pennies. And you'll want to attach the foam to the penny and to the thing that's going to slide. Then I put it through its sliding channel and turn it over and add the second penny. 
Now, at first I thought having two, like I doubled up the foam tape and I thought that would help it slide better. But if you want to double up the foam tape on your slider element, you also need to double up the foam tape on the back of your panel. How much ever foam tape you put on the back of your panel it needs to be the same as your slider element in order for it to slide easily. So here I'm going to put my card panel on the card base and realize that it's not sliding very well. And I probably should have doubled up the foam tape because it actually would have been a better sliding card. Um, but I didn't want it to be too difficult to go through the mail. So I decided to go with that single layer and then I wound up having to adjust my sliding element. Because you can see he's kind of getting stuck here. So I was actually able to carefully peel it up and take away one of those layers of foam and then he wound up sliding a little bit better. If you don't have to worry about postage, if you're going to hand this to somebody or put it in a package with a present, I would suggest using two layers of foam tape and using a, a better thickness of foam tape behind your card panel. But it does work both ways. And as mentioned before, that foam tape is going to stop it when it hits the top of the strongman's head. So even if you didn't have a slider die that was the perfect size, you can make whatever you have work. And of course, you can cut out your own slider channel as well. I do find that um, the rounded edge is a little nice detail on that. So he slides a little bit better now and makes for a fun interactive card. So that's it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll leave links to the products that I use in the video description below, as well as the Little Tangles Challenge so that you can check that out and play along since it is such a fun and easy theme this month. Have an awesome day. Bye.